We hear many people say, we used to hear people say, we used to. We used to. Basically, what we end up saying is, we've gotten used to. Don't get used to it. Look for better things. Where can you fall? This speaks about a completed act with an existing concept. It's something that happened, but now I'm suffering the consequences. Where have you fallen? Have fallen. Where have you fallen? Again, it speaks of a complete like it happened. You've fallen, but the results are still there. So when that happens, I end up doing things in the flesh. You know, I have to use my talents and my charisma and my power and my position to get things done. Takes me to number two. The number, number two is repent. That is cool. Repent. Remember. Repent. Repentance includes confession of sin. But notice this. With a view of stopping. Now you this is not remorse. This is not, oh guys, I feel bad because, but because you caught me with my hands in the cookie jar. You go to involved in any kind of prison ministry or jail ministry, about 99% of the prisoners are living in remorse because they got caught. This is about stopping that bad behavior so it can be replaced with godly living. Somebody say amen. amen. Now this is easier said than done. This is why the Holy Spirit has chosen to make our bodies His temple. You cannot do that at all. You'll never do it on your own. If you do it on your own, it's just religious reformation. But if you let him help you, it is real transformation. He's not interested in just impressing you with truth. He's interested, interested in changing your life completely. So again, repentance must be there. Repentance. And then the third word is return. Do the first word. Now, I, I, Brother Richard, I researched the word first, and you know what I discovered? It means first. Isn't that deep? First means first. Your first love. Matthew 6, 33, what does it tell us? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. John chapter 15 talks about abiding in him. And the more I abide in him, the more I enjoy being with him. This is not a call to increase activity, but to pursue intimacy with him. This is why we call to each other. Uh, I don't know what brother says to He's such a loving father, patient, gracious, and merciful and kind, that when you turn to him, you find him in the last six months. There is a scripture in the book of the, the epistles of the Romans, I believe it's either 4 2 or 2 4. You can look it up. It says, It is the kindness of God. It is the kindness of God that leads us, in other words, brings us back to repentance. When you understand how good and how gracious God is, you cannot help but want to come back to be fellowship with Him. Especially when you realize that you've known Him. Especially when you know you've done something horrific and horrendous and ugly and mean. And, and you, you know that you deserve it. When I was a little boy, no, when I was a teenager, my daddy had died, right? I had four brothers. And that was, it was Christmas time. And uh, my mom was having a difficult time making ends meet. She'd get a check at the beginning of the month. We did good at the beginning of the month. By the end of the month, it was beans and tortillas, which is a lot of protein there. I thought about Christmas. And uh, I, I, as we were in school, our friends were talking about what they were going to get for Christmas and all that. So I thought, I need to get my brother something. I'm the second of, of, of the others. But you know what I did? This is confession that's already been confessed. Uh, how many of you are young enough to remember those stamps that used to be redeemed? How many of you are young enough to remember? <laughs> you would take those stamps, you'd go to the grocery store. Daniel, you know what I'm you go to the grocery store. If you bought ten dollars worth of groceries, you get ten steps, right? You go home and you know, look at me. And after the book is filled, right, Brother Davis, you don't remember that either, right? You, you redeem the book for whatever. Well, guess what Pastor Richard did? I wasn't a pastor then. In fact, I wasn't even a Christian then, okay? I stole a whole roll of steps. 
I worked at a grocery store, and I stole a whole roll of stamps. You know what I did with a whole roll? I took them, I got a bunch of books, and I put them with all those stamps. And I had a bunch of books, Brother Ron. And I, and I told Mama, look what I got, Mama. And we went to the dear. My mom should have spanked me there, but she did, right? But uh, we went and got a bunch of The problem is that those are controlled items. And the owner of the store brought all of us there. So there was a bunch of teenagers that were driven and said, okay, he told us the situation. And he said, somebody has taken a roll of steps. But you know what he said? He was a good, he was a good Baptist deacon. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to fire any of I'm not. But I would want whoever did it to come to me and tell me, I want you to confess to me. Oh, man, I could sleep that night. I tossed and turned. Two or three days later, I had to come up to him and say, you know what? Yeah. You know what the guy did? He knew that I, my mom was a widow. He could have fired me. I just said, he said, Richard, I'm not going to fire you. I'm going to let you pay that back. My daughter will be paid. <laughs> that was mercy. Man, I felt undone. I felt dirty. I felt like I deserved to be fired. And yet he showed me mercy. How many times have we messed up in the presence of God? And yet he's been so merciful. And so bad. Amen? Amen. So be careful. Now, the consequences if I don't. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. Basically, what that means, you know, you'll lose your witness. Look up here. You and I know good well. That there are many Christians and many churches that have lost their witness. Yes, sir. So if I don't remember how good and kind he's been to me, if I refuse to remember, and if I don't repent of my opportunity to go back into intimacy with him, he's not obligated to use me. And guess what? He's not obligated to use you either. When I do not remove some of that stuff, of course, he'll remove my witness. Someone said, love, 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 love means lost light. Very simple. When you leave, not lost, you leave that love, you lose that light. Okay? So put it up there because they can see the wonderful phrase there. Lost light. Lost light. Give me one. I want to, I want to, oh, here it is. Left, love means what? Lost light. Think of it. Think of it. Please know this. The church in Ephesus, one of the churches mentioned in the book of the Apocalypse, a very influential church, is no longer in existence. You have to wonder why. We weren't there. All we have is what's written in this book. But historians tell us that that church just pursued some of the principles of God. And because of that, that church is no longer in existence. And I say, wow. An important lesson, if we do not correct our practices by the word, they will become traditions that become the doctrines of men and thus nullify the effectiveness of the word of God. And I will say to the church, beware. Beware. So as we come to the conclusion of this message, let me just say to us, we have a call. He who has an ear, let him hear what he says, what the Spirit says to the church. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden of the paradise of God. This is a loving call. It is a loving call to hear and heed. Not only hear, but heed. Is it exactly what you want with your kid? You don't want your kids just to hear you, but to obey you. Note the change from an appeal to the individual, he who has an ear, to the proof what the church says to the church. A church, brothers and sisters, please let me make this plea come across. A church is blessed collectively, but individually we assume responsibility. Listen to what I said. A church is blessed collectively, but individually we assume responsibility. In other words, I'm not expecting you to do it. I want to do it, and if you want to do it, then fine. Okay? I use my spiritual gifts. My time, my talents, my treasures. I strive to be faithful. I live a godly 
that lifestyle, pursue the unity of the Spirit, invite others to, to come to Jesus Christ, invite them to church, then in turn, the church of Jesus Christ is blessed. The church of Jesus Christ is blessed. This is what individuals will seek the approval of God over the apostle name. Now the conclusion of each message to the seven churches of Revelation. Two and three conclude with certain churches. A promise to the overcomer. Now I'm going to be dealing with the overcomer, the tree of life, and paradise. But you have to come back next How about you? Wednesday, discipleship day. Now, I would love for you to be there if possible. You can. Right now, what I want to do is pray. As I pray for you, may I ask that you pray for me? May I ask you to stand in his presence right now? Let's go. Dear God in heaven, as we bow before you again, we acknowledge your promised presence. Thank you for all the Bible. Holy Spirit inspired. Thank you that through the Bible you teach us what to believe and what not to believe. Thank you that you teach us how to live and how not to live. Thank you for the last book of the Bible. For the Apocalypse. Father, you begin that book by telling us, blessed are those who read and keep. You end this book by telling us, blessed are those who keep the words of this book. So now as we draw near to you, we ask, literally, God, we need help. Help. We need, yes, physical help. Many are facing physical challenges. And you are still Jehovah Rapha, a healer, in our own state. So God, we need help when it comes to the physical. We need help emotionally. Many of us, oh God, might find ourselves worried about this, concerned about that, afraid of this. Maybe thinking bad thoughts, bad dreams, bad nightmares. Maybe thinking bad about ourselves. Maybe we're thinking bad about other people. Maybe we have an evil eye, like the Bible says. And everything seems to be evil around us. Everybody's doing wrong. Maybe we have, we have a loose tongue. So we need help emotionally. But primarily we need help spiritually. The Bible tells us that when we become new creatures in Christ, you make us new people. You change our future, our destiny. You change our walk and our talk. So help us spiritually. We pray in the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to ask you another question here. Have you already invited the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart? If He came to seek you to save that which was lost, do you understand? Do you understand that without Jesus you're lost? Would you like to experience the forgiveness of your sin and eternal life? Don't complicate it. All it takes is for you to acknowledge that you're a sinner and then ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Maybe a simple but sincere prayer like this. Oh God, I recognize that I'm a sinful person. And then say to God, God, would you forgive me? Forgive me of all of my sins. And then say to Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Ask him to do it here. Now before I close this time of prayer, I want to know, did anybody in this place, or does anybody in this place want Jesus to come into your heart? You want to be saved, but you died and you know you want to go ahead. And you want to settle. Raise your hand quickly. I want to pray for you. Anybody? You want Jesus to be in your heart?
So today I will not call anyone to the altar, Father, but I pray that you will call us all to your altar to where we will experience you in such an intimate way. Do business with us, oh God. Help us to understand that we are like naked before you. Nothing can be hidden from God. Just like you said about the church, I know your works, your labor, your patience. Remind us that you know our works. Help us with that. As the church of Jesus Christ to understand two things. We're here to draw closer to you, and we're here to bring other people to you. We're here to draw closer to you. That's really